Well, if you were here last week or tuned in online, you were able to hear the wonderful testimony of uh, Kathy Latimer and God's word to her the night, uh, Friday night last week about the word of vision and sight. Actually, it was shared three different times at a prayer meeting she had gone to. And she felt the Lord quicken in her heart that that word was for her. Kathy had been suffering from macular degeneration. And uh, she stood up and shared before that meeting that she felt that God spoke that to her and that was going to be her healing. And the next day uh, on Saturday last week, she shared with us a story of how she was able to look up and see the ceiling fan for the first time in years. And there was no longer this dark cloud around her. So there was definitely a, a healing that was going on with her sight. And we rejoiced in that. We shared about the reality of that being a word of knowledge from the Lord, a word of knowledge about God bringing healing to vision and to sight, not only physically, but spiritually as well. Well, you know, one of the interesting things that happened at that service, not only was God doing a lot of healing, a lot of people going back for prayer, a lot of neat things happening, but at the end of the service, that service, Marcy came up to me. And I, in fact, during the message, I, she was just beaming from on her face. She was smiling from ear, ear to ear. And I knew something was going on. So at the end of the service, she came and shared her story. And she's here today. So give Marcy a nice warm welcome. She has a testimony to share as well. Just speak right into the mic, okay? <laughs> there you go. Good morning. Do you want to share about your thing going on first before your testimony? Oh, Again. sure, I can do that. Yeah. Um, uh, Sunday, a week from today, we have our on-site director coming from Ethiopia um, for a visit. And we will be having a lunch reception for her at uh, Covenant Church at 12 o'clock from 12 to 2. So all are welcome. I'll have some flyers in the back of the church today for anyone that's interested in finding out more information. She is the one that runs the project while we're here. So she oversees about 120 to 150 staff members and about 13,000 beneficiaries. So um, it's good to hear her stories and an update from her. So thank you so much for allowing me to share today. I love to share what God does and how good he is. And um, yeah, I came up to Father Joe after church last week and I said, you know, the craziest thing happened. And it always involves God when it's the craziest thing, right? <laughs> so I had brought my kids a week ago Saturday. I had brought my children to the park. And I had to run and do an errand. So my husband went with most of the kids to the park. And then um, I went with two of the kids to do this errand, my four-year-old and the baby. And as I'm pulling back into the parking lot where the, the park, where the playground is, I chose a spot, there were many parking spots available, but as I'm backing in, I, I looked and saw there's a pothole there. It's not often that you see a pothole in Naples, Florida. So <laughs> I noticed it. it, it struck me as odd. It could have been the Lord saying, you don't want to park there. <laughs> but I didn't hear that, I pulled right in and I um, started to climb into the van on the side to get the kids out and to carry stuff out. So I had my arms full of stuff, I had unbuckled one of the children and was stepping down on the ground and my foot hit this pothole and my ankle turned and I heard this loud pop and I fell back and I it would have been comical because I fell into this big mud puddle and I'm laying there in this mud puddle and it would have been comical if I wasn't in so much pain <laughs> and I started screaming because it was so painful and I'm there just with my two kids no one was in the parking lot um, I'm screaming and I had dropped everything that I was holding. It went all over the floor and um, all over the ground. And I looked over and I saw my phone and I knew if I could just call my husband, he's just on the other side of the park, he'll come and he'll help me. And I started to reach for my phone and I heard God say, what are you reaching for your phone for? I'm right here. And I went, okay, God, okay. So I prayed that everything that was torn, broken, destroyed during that fall would have been restored. And I said a pr quick prayer and I said, in Jesus' name. And as soon as I finished, it was very quick, as soon as I finished, the pain was completely gone. I looked down, looked at myself laying in this mud puddle, 
I went, huh, okay, move my foot around, hopped up, and then I noticed that my boys were coming, running to me at that time. They had finally, someone had, had heard and gotten people to come. So the boys were there, and then I noticed that there was this woman that was standing at a distance, and she had been watching the whole thing. And so I was covered in mud. I happened to have an extra pair of clothes in the car. I went to go change, and I was, as I was coming back from changing my clothes, God told me, you need to go talk to that woman. She's going to think you're insane. You're laying on the ground screaming, and the next second you're like, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine, you know? <laughs> so I went over to her, and I just... Uh, you know said hello and I said you know that was actually a pretty bad fall and she goes yeah I know I saw it and you were in so much pain I said yeah well you know I was and I I really believe that I, I believe in Jesus I believe in God and I heard God telling me to pray and so I prayed over it that I would be healed and then God healed me completely and she just raised her hand she goes I believe in Jesus and she was an older woman lives by herself has very little uh, contact with anyone else. She comes to the park and she sits under this tree in a chair by herself just to be with God in nature. Um, and it turned out she's been here for many years. We went to one of the same churches together um, and we talked about opera. We had a beautiful 30 minute conversation about how God works in so many different ways. And it was really beautiful because God took that, that fall that could have been a disaster he didn't, he didn't cause me to fall. He didn't want me to fall, but he took it and he made it something good and used it according to how we're able to share and use our testimonies. And I believe that about everything. Like, God heals everything. Uh, he doesn't do any bad. God is all good. And so I just continue to, can, continue to pray that for myself and my family and our lives and um, always am eager to share how God heals. So thank Amen. you. Oh, and one more thing. Okay. So that night I was, I was <laughs> sleeping and I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw, felt this intense pain in that ankle. And I literally heard a voice say, you lost your healing. Did I tell you this? No. I heard a voice say, you lost your healing. And I went, get behind me, Satan. I'm healed in the, in the name of Jesus. And I spoke over that ankle again. I fell asleep and I was totally fine and haven't had any problems since then. It was a few days later that one of my kids was, I had my foot like this, and one of my kids decided to jump on my foot. <laughs> and um, I said, oh, don't do that. And it was only after I was like, I was annoyed that they were jumping on my foot. It was only after I was annoyed that they were jumping on my foot that I realized my foot was, my ankle was completely healed because that would have been very painful yeah. if it hadn't been healed. So it was just another reminder for me um, of God's amazing power. Amen, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so you know what who does that I don't know about you but I've twisted my ankle a few times I used to play a lot of tennis and you know I twist my ankle about once every three or four months it was a usual tennis injury and then the usual stuff would happen you'd have to ice it you would limp along for about eight eight weeks um, you gradually get back, maybe do some PT so you could be playing again. So I know that injury by heart. I've had it a lot. So when Marcy came up and shared this story with me at the end of last week's service, God made it very clear to me, um, Joe, I'm moving in miraculous ways among your people. And that's why I felt it was so important for Marcy to share her testimony today about how God moves in miraculous ways. And you know, it's interesting, you and I normally in that kind of injury would have done the normal thing. We would have just been like Marcy, we would have called on the phone, gotten somebody over there to help us, gone to the clinic or iced it and just done the normal recovery thing. But she heard the voice of the Lord. The Lord interrupted her before she made that call as he called out to her and said, what about me? What about me healing you in this moment? And the wonderful news today is Marcy listened to the Lord, prayed in faith, and the Lord instantaneously healed her ankle. That is a miracle. Um, and so we give thanks to God for that. And so one of the things I want to ask you here today is, 
How is the Lord speaking to you in your own life? Is there a miracle that God wants to do in you? Last week, we were talking about the word of knowledge about vision and sight and how God is bringing healing in that area, both in the physical and the spiritual. And by the way, uh, if you weren't here last week and you're just hearing that word today, that is a word of knowledge that is timeless. It still applies in this moment. So if you need healing of your vision physically, or maybe you need healing of your vision spiritually, be open to that in this moment. But I also want to invite you to be open to how is God speaking to you in this moment to follow him, to step out in faith and believe God for the miracle that he wants to do in your life? Let me ask you this in another way. What miracle do you need God to do? Let's close our eyes for just a moment. I'm not done yet, but we're going to close our eyes for just a moment. And I want to invite you just to go before the Lord in this moment. And Holy Spirit, I ask right now, both in this sanctuary and everybody who is watching online right now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would begin to sovereignly move and begin to quicken in the hearts of your people. And even those who do not know you, how you want to move in their life in a miraculous way right now. Maybe it is a physical healing. Maybe it is a spiritual healing or a relational healing. Maybe you need a job, you need financial healing. Holy Spirit, we just will wait in this moment and allow you to speak to us. Thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. So as the Lord is quickening in your heart right now, right, right now about the miracle he wants you to do, I just want to invite you in faith. If, the, if you need a miracle from the Lord, just reach out your hand to the Lord. This is between you and the Lord. Reach out your hand to him and just begin to proclaim to him as Marcy, the Lord, in faith, I receive the miracle you want to do in my life. I receive it right now in the name of Jesus because you are a miracle working God. And you want to work this miracle in my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so you know what? It's as simple as that. You, we want to make it complicated. It is not complicated. It is that simple. And you know, it's interesting. In our Old Testament lesson today, we read the story about some visitors showing up at Abraham and Sarah's tent. And Abraham invites them to come and share a meal with him, as was the custom in that day in terms of hospitality. And so as they come to share a meal, one of the guests asks them, by the way, where is your wife, Sarah? And Abraham says, she's over there in the tent. And he says, at the right time, I will return and she will be with child. Now, the funny thing about this Old Testament lesson today is there's some more to the story that's not in here. In the gospel, in the Old Testament lesson next week, we're probably going to read the part where after Sarah hears this, she starts to laugh. She laughs at this word of the Lord because she is well beyond childbearing uh, years, and so is Abraham as well. God has had decades to fulfill this promise to Abraham that he was going to be the father of many nations. And the one thing that Abraham and Sarah have not had up to this point is a kid. They don't have a kid. We have babies here today. They did not have a baby at that moment. And so Sarah laughs. Sarah laughs at, the, at this word from God as if it's not going to happen. Because she doubted. And yet she ends up having a child about a year from then. And so again, one of the things that happens in our spiritual life is that oftentimes God will speak a promise to us. God will quicken something to us in our hearts. It might be in the scripture. It might be in prayer. It might be through another person. It might be when we're sitting in the only pothole in Florida. <laughs> she found the only pothole in Florida. I was in Ohio. Let me tell you, we have potholes all over the place. We have potholes that swallowed cars. She found the only pothole in Florida. 
As she's sitting in that pothole, God reaches out to her and speaks to her, call out to me and believe me for the miracle healing of your ankle. And so you see, part of what God needs to do in our spirit is bring a healing to our spirit to begin to believe him to move in our lives in miraculous ways. Now, Abraham and Sarah had been walking in faith for a number of years. They had been waiting for God to fulfill his promise to them, but it hadn't happened yet. Now, I don't know about you, but one of the things I tend not to pray for is patience. I do not pray for that because I have... I've had experience with that prayer. I invariably get behind the slow person in the fast lane. I invariably get in the express lane at the grocery store and there's the guy or the girl in front of me that has 20 items and they should only have 10 and there's three or four other people in front of them. I do not pray for patience. But I don't have to because it comes to me anyways. And you see, that's part of the challenge in our journey is God's timing is often not our timing. God's ways are often not our ways. He waits for us to end up in the potholes of our life in a moment of God's own choosing when he sovereignly speaks the word of the Lord and says, it is time now. It is time now. And that is a pruning that goes on in our spirit. There is a cutting away of control in our lives. There's a cutting away of, God, I want you to do it my way, in my time, in the way that I'd like to do it. I have a wonderful plan, God, and I expect you to follow my plan. Right? Hello? We all do that, by the way, not just me. And God says, it will be in my way, it will be in my time, and it will be at a place of my own choosing. And you see, that's the place of surrender, and that's the place of miracles, and that's the place where God moves in sovereign and powerful and anointed ways. And there needs to be that pruning in our spirit. There needs to be the cutting away of our control. There needs to be a cutting away of our impatience there needs to be a cutting away of unbelief. Some of you have given up on yourselves. Some of you maybe didn't even pray that prayer a little bit earlier about miracle because in that area in your life, you've already given up. You've already tried for 10, 20, 30, 40 years and you've given up hope on yourself. But let me share with you about someone who's not given up on you. God, God has not given up on you. And you need to hear that word today. The word that we received from Kathy last week, macular degeneration. I, there are a number of people in this church that have that in the Naples as well. I have not heard anybody getting healed from that. I just have not heard it. First time. It's a miracle. Marcy's miracle of her ankle. I've had a lot of ankle injuries as a tennis player. I've never heard of anybody in a pothole in Florida praying for their ankle to be healed and then getting up and be able to walk around without any pain at all, a miracle. And so beloved of God, here in this moment that God is moving in miraculous ways in our lives and God has me sharing these stories with you and inviting people to share these stories with you so that you would be encouraged. There is a brother in this church. He and I have covenanted in prayer and we're praying for you. We are praying that everybody in this church would receive the miracle of God that he wants to give to you right now because it's evident to us that God is moving in miraculous ways. Right now, in fact, I have another story about a miracle but I'm gonna share that with you a little later during the service. That just came last night. <laughs> so it's all over the place. You know, I just try to listen. That's all I try to do. I just try to listen. I try to see what God is doing and join him. I'm inviting you to join us. 
I'm inviting you to be open to the miracle that God wants to do in your life. The water is being stirred right now. And it's not just for one person. It's for every one of you as you step out in faith to the Lord. And so, Devotions from the Garden, the title is Pruning. My father cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Pruning is a good way to promote a healthy garden. This cutting off of dead leaves, blossoms, stems, and branches helps give a plant shape and, more importantly, encourages growth. In fact, trimming cuts from certain plants can grow on their own, independent of the source plant from which they were cut. The longer this vital step of pruning is delayed, however, the more difficult those benefits will take to occur. Furthermore, pruning is a delicate process. If done incorrectly, it can actually kill a plant instead of promote its growth. Spiritual pruning works the same way. God will cut away something or someone who is keeping us from growing. This pruning can mark the beginning of a dark period because the sources of comfort and strength we've uh, relied on are gone. Making the darkness heavier is the fact that God seems to be far away. Whatever the specifics of this very personal process, pruning means the removal of hindrances that keep us from becoming all that we can be in God's plan for our lives. Being pruned is never fun, amen. Comfortable or pleasant, yet when the process is completed, When unhealthy parts of our character have been removed, our life can take on a new shape and we can find ourselves growing spiritually with new vitality. Then, relying more on God's power and strength, we move forward in life in ways that are pleasing to him and beneficial to us and to others.